I got one big question that's on the screen for you. What makes you feel comfortable? Socks. Socks. Yoga pants. Yoga. I mean, okay, yoga pants. <laughs> it feels weird saying that out loud. Yoga pants. What makes you feel comfortable? My bed. People. Being in bed? People? Who said that? All people? No, it's people. It's right? Just any old body? Yeah. What kind of people make you feel comfortable? Your people? Yeah. All right. Routine. Routine. Okay. See, now we're getting somewhere. What makes you feel comfortable? <laughs> what? God's word. God's word makes you feel comfortable. Did it always make you feel comfortable? No. Uh, it only makes you feel comfortable when you're obeying it, right? Isolation. Sorry? Isolation. Isolation makes you feel comfortable, okay? Anybody else? What makes you feel comfortable? This is good because we learn from each other. Good connection with a friend. Good connections with a friend. Amen. A cup of hot tea. A cup of hot tea. Helping humanity. Helping humanity makes you feel comfortable. Oh, yeah. All right. Good. Drawing. Drawing helps you feel comfortable. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of drawing, I think there were some more Sketch It Sunday sheets in the back, if anybody, like my brother likes to doodle and you didn't bring a notebook. Being healthy. Being healthy makes a lot of us feel comfortable, yeah. Unfortunately, we take that one for granted way too much, right? It's one of those things that like, we don't appreciate being healthy until we're not, right? What makes you feel comfortable? Well. As you can see and hear, right, from some of the things that were shared, we all have a list of things, right? <laughs> maybe we're consciously aware of them, maybe we're not, but we all have things that make us feel comfortable. Uh, is Pastor Joe in here? Did he go up? He's a kid with purpose. Oh, here he comes. Anyway, you can ask Pastor Joe about this after, after church. He's a food guy. You might not know it, but when when he's celebrating something, it's food. <laughs> food is a big part of it. When he goes on vacation, one of the best the things he gets most excited about about vacation is the food that he's going to eat. Right, Pastor Joe? <laughs> See, it's like yeah. <laughs> you heard the term comfort food? Yes. Yeah. Now. And that's not just southern food, right? It's not just mashed potatoes or fried chicken. Or cheese grits. Everybody has, like, right, right now, each of you is like, oh, yeah, <coughs> I know my go-to foods, right? And it's different. It's different, but you gravitate toward them when you feel stressed, when you feel frustrated. That's why we call them comfort foods, because they make you... Comfortable to make you feel better, right? Or at least your brain is tricking you into thinking that you feel better for a short amount of time. Yeah? Yeah. It's, it's really a trick. So we also have favorite places, right? Comfortable places. My brother said, my bed. Yes. It's pretty should be a pretty comfortable place, right? <laughs> <laughs> or maybe it's a comfortable chair or a couch. Like you got where where are my guys at especially? Like do you have do you have like your chair at home? <laughs> yeah. Or like your spot on the couch? Like it's got your butt imprint. <laughs> right? That's your comfortable spot. That's where you're like you come home from a long and this is not just for guys, right? But like you got you had a long day or whatever, if you're a you know, mom or a parent, like you've been with the kids all day, and it's like, oh my gosh, you just can't wait to get into that comfortable place, right? Yes, my recliner. Yes. So some people, it's like, oh, it's the beach, right? The beach is my place where like, I'm all, I can only really relax when I'm at the beach with the sound of the waves or whatever. For some people, it's the mountains. They need to be out with the trees and the bears and stuff. 
to feel <laughs> to feel right. Um, yeah. Anyway, you guys get it. My point is, we all gravitate toward something when we want to feel comfortable. Okay. You're all we're all together on that, right? Yep. But this is the interesting thing. For some of us, and this is not me, but I'm trying to help us understand each other, right? First, you need to seek to understand yourself, and Holy Spirit helps you with that. But then you need to grow and learn to understand others. Amen. Because God didn't just save you so that you could live an isolated life all by yourself. He saved you so that you could... Brother Evan read it. Go and make disciples. That's a commandment for each and every one of us. Nobody's exempt from that commandment. So even if your comfortable place is isolation, you don't get to do that all the time when you belong to Jesus. Because the Bible says, your life is not your own. Okay? So I'm, I'm trying to help us understand each other. Sometimes our comfortable place is actually busyness. Noise, distractions, right? I gotta just keep it moving all the time because if I stop, then I have to deal with myself. Mm. That's real. Right? If it gets quiet, then I have to hear the thoughts that are in my mind. Yeah. Right? Sometimes we stay busy because it's more comfortable than dealing with the junk, the realities of life. Yeah. So we just keep working, always working, never not working. Troy Palomalu, right? Head and shoulders. Never not working. My favorite commercial when I watch football. <laughs> because as a pastor, I kind of relate to that. Like, never not working. <laughs> Always on call. Right? I don't resent it. It's just the reality. Yeah. But, okay. So, some of us, we have patterns of work that allow us to stay so buried in tasks. So buried in tasks that we cannot be bothered by the difficult realities of life. Mm -hmm. The noise and the busyness of life actually drowns out the uncomfortable silence of rest and stillness. So I'm just pointing out that what you seek for comfort might not be what your brother or sister seeks for comfort. Mm -hmm. You might be the isolation person. I'll oh, just leave me alone. That's my comfortable place. But somebody else is going, man, I'm super uncomfortable when I'm alone. I want to be with people. Right? Mm -hmm. Some people want to go to the country where it's quiet. That's their, their comfortable place. And other people are like, oh, my gosh, I feel so like something's going to eat me out here. Like, put me in the city. <laughs> right? where, where things are laid out in lines and I know where I'm going, right? Comfort looks different for different people. Some of us are more comfortable when there are rules. No rules. I'm sorry. No rules. No structure. Because we feel like we're free, right? Like, yeah. I, I feel free in this. No, no rules. No structure. But others of us feel super uncomfortable in those spaces. We're like, what are the rules? <laughs> like, I don't feel comfortable until I know what the structure is, what the rules are, right? Because those, that structure and those rules make us feel safe. I'm an oldest child. I'm a rule follower. Rules and structure make me feel safe. But I have to understand that that's not everyone, right? I'm not everyone. You are not everyone. What makes you comfortable is not what should be the rule for everyone else. Are you guys with me on this? Okay. So being comfortable, what makes you feel comfortable, mm -hmm. is different than what makes somebody else feel comfortable. So as we journey through uh, a few scriptures, I'm asking you to just search your heart. Mm -hmm. Search your heart, ask the Holy Spirit to reveal you to yourself, mm -hmm. and ask him to help you understand your brothers and sisters. Because there's some things that we need to become aware of, and and we're gonna we're gonna talk about this. We need to be, become aware of what we run to when we feel like we need comfort. Where where do you run when you feel you need comfort, and why? 
That's, that's what I think God wants to do today. Because if you're taking notes, write this down because this is, this is really good. It's not because I'm saying it, but it's going to help somebody. Because it's important because what you run to will reveal where your treasure is. Oh, that's okay. mm-hmm. In a moment of need, what you run to reveals where your treasure is. And Jesus said, where your treasure is, there your heart is also. Amen. So when when Holy Spirit shows you what you're running to for comfort, <laughs> he's showing you where your treasure is so that he can reveal to you where your heart is. Amen? Oh, that's real. This stuff cuts deep. So I want to lay a foundation for, oh, I had to look at that. I even had it on a slide for you. Man. What you run to reveals where your treasure is. I, I hope these graphics inspire somebody. Maybe you want to, like, put this on your wall at home. Mm-hmm. You know? Get some big old vinyls made and just stick it up there to remind yourself when you go to sit in your comfortable chair. It's like, wait, am I called to be comfortable? Or am I called to go and make disciples? Ooh. Yes. It's not that you can never sit in your favorite chair. Don't, don't get it twisted. <laughs> but what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to lay a foundation today for this, this statement. If you were here, a lot of you weren't, so I apologize. But this is actually part two of a, a sermon message called Comfort is a Killer. <coughs> um, so if you missed part one, you can check that out on our YouTube channel. <coughs> But I want to lay a better foundation for that statement that comfort is a killer. Because every single one of us hears that and goes right to what makes you comfortable. Right? What makes you feel comfortable. But that's different than what makes someone else comfortable. Now, let me clarify. And don't worry, we're going to get into the word. Comfort. Comfort, in general, is only a killer when we're seeking to be comfortable more than we're seeking to obey God. Mm. Mm. Okay? So it's not that God says you should never be comfortable. Right? You should always be uncomfortable. That's the most godly place to always... No. But when we, when we seek our own comfort above and beyond being obedient to what God has said, now that becomes a problem for us it actually begins to kill us or kill what God is trying to do in you and through you, right? So comfort in and of itself, I want to be clear about this. Comfort in and of itself is not sinful. It is not sinful for you to come home from a long day of work and sit in your comfortable chair, right? right? It's not sinful for you to go on vacation or have times of rest. It's not sinful. But just like money, the love of it, Mm-hmm. can be like you remember what Jesus said he didn't say money is evil he said the love of money leads to it's the root of all kinds of evil and so comfort is kind of the same way comfort in and of itself is not sinful but when it's the desire like when it's all we live for when it's the primary motivator of how we make decisions and how we organize our lives right when being comfortable is the primary motivator, it can lead us into all different types of sin issues in our lives. Mostly disobedience to God. That's the, that's the biggest thing. So let me try to explain this. Because I'm talking about sin now, so we have to make sure we're, we're all understanding, having the same understanding of, of words, right? Because... If you don't understand a word that I use, then you think I'm talking about something that I might not be talking about. Right. Okay? Or the Bible might be saying something that it's not actually saying if you don't understand the words. So sin. What is sin? I serve uh, through Child Evangelism Fellowship. You might have seen the sign out here, out front, on the Good News Club down the street at Conestoga Elementary School. Uh, actually, I started serving there um, under a different leader, he uh, had to back out of that. And so I became the leader of the Good News Club. And I've been doing that for a few years now. And it's amazing. 
It's amazing. But even more amazing is Child Evangelism Fellowship. They have like almost a hundred year history of intentionally working to evangelize and disciple children. Like Brother Evan said, they are the future, and that's what Child Evangelism Fellowship exists to do. And so, in their many, many years of working with children and learning how to share, you know, the, the realities of the Bible, there's like so many deep truths in here. How do you make those accessible to a child, right? They've broken it down to this when they talk about sin. And uh, in Good News, Good News Club, we use a lot of hand motions. So you can just learn along with me and, and go with me, okay? In Good News Club, we say, sin is anything I think, say, or do that does not please God or breaks his laws. Correct. One more time? Yep. Yes. All right. Move your hands so that you don't fall asleep. Sin is anything I think, say, or do that does not please God or breaks his laws. Amen. Okay? That's it. That's it. If you're like, well, is it sin? Well, is it something I think, something I say, something I do that does not please God or breaks his laws? Yes, it's sin. <laughs> Simple. For you, it is sin. And so what I want to talk about today, in terms of comfort is a killer, is that, biblically, anything less, if, if this right here, this imaginary line that I'm drawing, if this is full and complete obedience to God, anything less than that imaginary line is sin. Because it's not fully pleasing to God. Right. Okay. right? Just the littlest disobedience is displeasing to God, and so therefore it's sin. Yeah. So let's read in Genesis chapter 4, verse 1 through 7. If you know nothing about the Bible, Genesis is the easiest one to find because it's right at the beginning. And we are in chapter 4, which is close to the beginning. Are you all there, Genesis chapter 4? Yes. Oh, uh, if anybody needs a Bible, Brother Mike, or Bart's got them. Just raise your hand if you need a Bible, if you forgot one today, and Bart will hook you up with one of our Bibles that we have here at church. We don't want anybody to be without the Word of God while we're reading it together. All right, Genesis chapter 4, 1 through 7. It says... Now Adam had sexual relations with his wife Eve, and she became pregnant. When she gave birth to Cain, she said, With the Lord's help, I have produced a man. Later she gave birth to his brother and named him Abel. When they grew up, Abel became a shepherd while Cain cultivated the ground. You got that? Yes. Abel, shepherd. Younger one, shepherd. Older one, cultivated the ground. It's like a farmer. All right? When it was time for the harvest, Cain presented some of his crops as a gift to the Lord. Good for him, right? <coughs> Abel also brought a gift, the best portions of the firstborn lambs from his flock. It says the Lord accepted Abel and his gift, but he did not accept Cain and his gift. This made Cain very angry, and he looked dejected. Verse 6. Why are you so angry, the Lord asked Cain. Why do you look so dejected? You will be accepted if you do what is right. But if you refuse to do what is right, then watch out. <coughs> Sin is crouching at the door, mm. eager to control you. Mm. But you must subdue it and be its master. Mm. 
Amen. This is an interesting piece of scripture. Because you can see it, right? Both brothers brought their gifts to God. But God didn't accept one's gift. He didn't accept Cain's gift, to be specific. Now, in this example, Cain had the opportunity. He had the opportunity and the ability to adjust, right? To be like, oh, I'm sorry, I, I didn't, I didn't realize. I thought I was bringing you a good, a good gift. Oh, this is not what you want. You want this? Okay. You know, let me just adjust. I wasn't aware, right? Have you ever had that happen? Right. Somebody yes. brings correction to you, and you're like, oh, I'm sorry, I, I didn't know. Yeah. And I adjust. That, yeah, that could have been Cain. But instead, he was not willing to adjust to what God required of him. Yeah. Wow. He stubbornly wanted to be able to bring to God whatever he wanted to bring to God. Right? This is my gift. Take it or leave it. Right? Can you imagine saying that to God? This is, this is what I'm willing to give. You can take it or not. It doesn't matter to me what you require. Can you imagine And that's why seeking to be comfortable in bringing what we feel comfortable bringing to God, that's why seeking to be comfortable can lead us to sin against God when we're choosing our way over his way. Our thoughts over his thoughts. Our will over his will. That's really what's happening. Seeking to be comfortable in this life, and again, sometimes that's not doing things, right? The, those of us that are more comfortable, like, leave me alone, you know, give me my space, like, and sometimes being comfortable is staying super busy, right? We talked about all this. But seeking to be comfortable in this life can lead us, you, to the same place it led Cain, where we are angry and bitter at God when we are the ones who brought it on ourselves. Oops. Yes. So real. Yes. God warned Cain. He warned him. Sin is crouching at the door and it is eager to control you. And God is giving us the same warning today. Sin is crouching at the door to your comfortable place. It's sitting on the comfortable couch waiting for you. And it's eager to control you if you let it. If you let it. Amen? Now let's go to almost to the back of your Bible. First Peter, let me put it up here. First Peter chapter 5. It's easy to miss. First Peter 5. Verse 8. Now while you're getting there, to 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8, uh, this year, it's the year of greater access here at Live With Purpose Church. The year of greater access. <coughs> and that's based on Revelation 3.20. 3.20, yeah. <laughs> but we've been, for those of you that haven't been with us, we've been in this... Uh, I did this long sermon series, right? Raise your hand. It was super long. I don't even know how many parts it had because I lost track. But called Empty, and we were looking at Simon, who became Peter. Jesus changed his name from Simon to Peter. He was a fisherman, and Jesus says, I'm going to make you a fisher of men, right? Simon Peter. That's the dude. Oh. That's our guy. Simon the fisherman. He's writing this in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8. He says, stay alert. Watch out for your great enemy, the devil. He prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Hmm.
I don't think you can make it much clearer than that. Watch out. Our enemy, the devil, he prowls around like a roaring lion. But if you've never watched a lion, if, if your only understanding of a lion is a male lion like this roaring, you know, ah, you need to go watch a lion stalk its prey. Mm -hmm. yes. They don't go around making a big, I'm a lion and I'm going to eat you, right? No. They're, it's incredible to watch. We got to go on safari uh, in Kenya after we were there. Um, and actually, the second time I went, we saw a whole bunch of lions. It was amazing. But we got to watch a, a female lion, a lioness, track and stalk, and uh, two males as well. Um, but the, the, the female, it was just so, it was the most graceful thing I think I've ever seen. She's just, so, it was like slow motion, and her eyes were just, her head was completely steady, ears forward. She was locked in on this little, like, gazelle that was just, you know, <laughs> <laughs> just eating the grass, right? Flicking its tail to get the flies off it, and, and she's just all the way through the grass. It has no idea that she's there, right? Stalking, silent, made no noise at all. Our enemy is not just a roaring lion, right? That's super obvious. It's also, he's also very cunning and clever and tries to remain unseen. Yes tries to make sure that you're not aware that he's stalking you until he's got you by the throat. Right? And then he's going to choke you out. That's his goal. To steal, kill, and destroy. Sin's desire is to control you, to devour you like that lion, crouching and hiding, stalking its prey. But... You don't have to be afraid because you can be its master. You can subdue it. Right? In, in the safari, I felt kind of safe because I was in the vehicle. Now, I was standing up out of the roof getting video because it was amazing. But I had a sense of security. Right? We have a greater security in Christ than I even had... <laughs> in that open top vehicle. I mean, if that lioness wanted to jump on me, she totally could have. There really wasn't anything to stop her. But we have the ability to subdue sin and its desire to control us. And we have the ability to be its master. Why? Because Jesus has won the victory for us. Right? We can't ever be good enough, but Jesus has done the work. He said it is finished. Go to James chapter 4. It's right um, I'm sorry. It's right before 1 Peter. Just a couple pages if you're flipping pages like I am. James chapter 4 verses 7 through 10. James says so humble yourselves before God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. I was, just wanted to give a little pause there, because that was a great place to say amen. amen. <laughs> you, man, if somebody's just preaching, like, you know, you can say amen whenever you want, but, like, when the word comes, <laughs> that's the best time to say amen. So humble yourselves before God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Amen. 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 Come close to God, and God will come close to you. Amen. Wash your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts, for your loyalty is divided between God and the world. Amen. 
Let there be tears for what you have done. Let there be sorrow and deep grief. Let there be sadness instead of laughter and gloom instead of joy. Humble yourselves before the Lord and he will lift you up in honor. Amen. So good. Can I tell you that instead of, just like Cain, you have the choice to make what you do when life is hard, when you don't feel accepted, when you're like, man, like, I thought I was doing something good for God, and now I'm finding out that, like, oh, that's not, that's not acceptable? Yeah. Like, right? You feel rejected. Yeah. But God wasn't rejecting Cain, and he's not rejecting you. He's saying, you have the opportunity, I'm giving you the opportunity to adjust. To not be divided, to not be double-minded, to not have your loyalty divided between God and the world. Amen? Amen. So in, in that moment, when, when God reveals that to you, like, hey, you've been running to something other than me. You've been running to what makes you feel better in the moment, but that's not going to last. you got to run to me. Jesus said, come to me. All who are weary and carry heavy burdens, right? And I will give you rest. If you're looking for comfort, where do you go? Just say, Jesus. Jesus. Jesus is the one. When Jesus becomes your comfortable place, that's where you go right away. When you feel hurt, when you feel discouraged, when you feel rejected, right? When you feel like you're not good enough, you go right to him. Instead of running away from God, instead of running away from obeying God, it's your opportunity to get even closer to Him. Right? right. It said, come close to God and He will come close to you. Every time, I'm just repeating in different words, like just summarizing. Every time you resist the devil, He will flee from you. Yes. He will. Doesn't mean He won't come back. <laughs> That's true. Right? That lioness that I that we watch stalking, the antelope ran away. They they saw it and they ran away. She just laid down. Like, oh. <laughs> Guess I'll just wait for something else to walk by. Right? Like, resist mm -hmm. the devil, he will flee from you. But the lioness didn't she wasn't done hunting for the day. Right. right. <laughs> That's good. We can never get comfortable and complacent thinking like, oh, man, you're great. I resisted the devil. Like, I'm home free now. No. No. It's going to happen again and again and again. Amen? Amen. But every time you humbly obey God, this is the word of God. Every time you humbly obey God, he will lift you up in honor. He's got your back. If you will just go to him. If you will just run to him, if you will find your comfort in him. Last, but certainly not least, we're going to read our theme scripture for the year, Revelation 3. But we're going to read the whole section, Revelation 3. Uh, again, if you're not familiar with the Bible, Revelation is the last. So we started in the first book of the Bible, and we're going to end in the last one. We haven't covered the whole thing, but, you know, we got beginning and end. Revelation chapter 3, verse 14 through 22. At the, um, at the conference, I'm wearing the shirt. Uh, the conference is our network of churches that we're a part of, including the church that we were planted out of. So it's the In the Light uh, network of churches. Um, it's a blessing. 
talk to Pastor Joe and Jen, um, talk to Evan, talk to Joe, Jody and I. Um, there's too many stories to, to share, but I'll just say this. I left feeling <coughs> so loved because God was correcting us. Wow. I felt disciplined by our leaders, even by guest speakers that came all the way from California. <laughs> Don't know me from anybody. I never met them before. And they're like speaking the word of God is like, ah, oh man. Right? Like we, we got to, we got to sharpen up. But that, that discipline, that correction, that wasn't discouraging for me. No. It wasn't hurtful to me. Because I know the Bible says that God disciplines those that he loves. Like a child. That we can know that we are children of God because he disciplines and corrects us. So don't be discouraged when he does. Yeah. Amen? Amen. That's a good word. So that's, that's something that I received from being at conference. Um, I would encourage you to prioritize that next year in your schedule. Take time mm -hmm. off. Do whatever you need to do. Um, talk to us if, if you need help, you know, if the financial aspect is a, a hindrance or a burden, just talk to us. Um, you know, we want to, we want to be a blessing. The church wants to be a blessing to you, um, and, and equip you so that you can obey God. Amen. Amen. We want to equip you so that you can obey God. That's what it comes down to. Not so that you obey us as the pastors, the leaders of the church. Mm -hmm. We're nobody. We want to equip you so that you can obey God. Yes. And so Jesus speaks to John in the spirit while he is a captive, a prisoner on the island of Patmos. It was, a, it was an island prison. You, they would drop you off there, and good luck. But John receives this vision, these messages from Jesus and his spirit. And so in Revelation 3.14, Jesus instructs him, Write this letter to the angel of the church in Laodicea. This is the message from the one who is the Amen. The faithful and true witness, the beginning of God's new creation. He says, I know all the things you do, that you are neither hot nor cold. I wish you were that you were one or the other. But since you are like lukewarm water, neither hot nor cold, I will spit you out of my mouth. There's an exclamation point there if you're not reading along with me. I will spit you out of my mouth. You say, I'm rich. I have everything I want. I don't need a thing. And you don't realize that you are wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. So I advise you to buy gold from me. Gold that has been purified by fire. Then you will be rich. Also, buy white garments from me, so you will not be shamed by your nakedness. An ointment for your eyes, so you will be able to see. I correct and discipline everyone I love. So be diligent. And turn from your indifference. 
<clears throat> this is our scripture for the year. Look, I stand at the door and knock. If you hear my voice and open the door, I will come in and we will share a meal together as friends. Those who are victorious will sit with me on my throne, just as I was victorious and sat with my father on his throne. Anyone with ears to hear must listen to the Spirit and understand what he is saying to the churches. Amen. This is not what I am saying to the church. This is what I believe Jesus is saying to his church. And I'm so thankful that he corrects and disciplines us because he loves us. He loves you. And so it's that humility, right? Right. It says, humble yourself before God. Humble yourselves before God. We read it in James 4, 7. Humble yourselves before God. And that's what we have the opportunity to do right now. That's what we have the opportunity to do right now. We've, we've asked the Holy Spirit to help us understand ourselves, right? We've heard some examples of how we can try to understand each other more fully, right? And we've seen in the Word of God, from beginning to end, That we can be accepted right. if we do what is right. Mm -hmm. If we do what is required of us. The first part of that, and I want to be I want to be super clear about this before we pray. The first part of that is actually fully surrendering to Jesus. Because you cannot and you will not be capable of being acceptable before God. I don't care. Not me. I, I don't care. But God doesn't care. The Bible doesn't care like that you did good stuff. That you were a good person and you tried to be loving and kind to people. Right? Your whole life you can be a good person. If you haven't surrendered fully to Jesus... You're not acceptable because he's the only one that's acceptable before God. He's the only perfect one. Only Christ. Never me. Though I seek, right, we seek to be like him. We want to be like Jesus. But he's the only one. So that's where it begins. I, I want to be clear about that. I don't want this to become a works a works mentality message for, for us, right? Where we're like, well, I just got to work harder, and, you know, I just got to be more perfect, and then God, I'm acceptable before God. No, you're acceptable before God when the blood of Christ yes. has cleansed you. Yes. Yes. Amen. Mm. That's what makes you acceptable <coughs> before God. Amen? Amen? Amen. But then it says that we are to work that out. We are to work out our salvation in fear and trembling. That's what it says. Like with that holy fear before God, like, thank you, Lord, that you've saved me and you've made me acceptable before my Father. But now, now I choose to do whatever you require of me. Yeah? Yes. You will not be able to do whatever he requires of you on, in your own strength. Am I being clear about this? Yes. Okay, so before we pray, I want to give that invitation that if you have not fully surrendered your life to our Lord, our Savior, Jesus Christ, the Messiah, I want you to have that opportunity right now. And I don't, 
particularly like to, you know, ask people to raise your hand or come up front or whatever, because it's like super personal. This is a personal thing between you and God. And maybe you're like our sister who prefers isolation, and you're like, no way. I am not accepting Jesus if it requires me to come up front. <laughs> so I try to be sensitive to that. Okay, so you don't have to raise your hand. You don't have to make yourself known. But I want you to know that God sees your heart. And right now we're all going to close our eyes. And we're going to have that one-on-one -on -one time with God. And so if that's you right now, there's something happening in your heart. And if you're anything like me, you have no idea what is happening. And that's okay. Jesus himself said, you cannot explain how someone is born of the Spirit. I can't take you through a you know, 10-step program or process of giving yourself fully to Jesus, of fully surrendering to him, of being filled with his spirit. But I can tell you this. If you draw close to God right now from your heart, because it's the Bible, he will draw close to you. He's already drawing closer to you. Just simply because in your heart you felt like, God, are you, is this for me today? <clears throat> Just because you heard that knock on the door of your heart, that's Jesus knocking on the door of your heart. Just because you heard it, he's, he's drawing you closer to him. And you don't have to understand it. You don't have to understand how Jesus got to that door of your heart. You don't need to understand what's going to happen if I open the door. What's he going to do? What, what's going to happen to me? You don't have to understand all that. He just said, if you hear me knocking and you open the door, I will come in and we will share a meal together as friends. And that's what he did for me. Yes. And I didn't understand what was happening. I didn't even know that I got out of my seat and came to the front. And I, you know, I don't remember any of it. I just know that I was there. Amen. <clears throat> yes. And I had come to a place in my life where I finally recognized that I couldn't do it. That I couldn't do life on my own anymore. Amen. I don't even remember hearing him knock. I don't remember anything about it. I just, all I know, my, my memory begins when I got up off the floor. Amen. Oh my heart. And I didn't know what had happened to me, but I knew that I was a different person. Amen. Jesus. All I knew was that he had taken my heart. That was so hard and cold. And he had replaced it with a new heart. I didn't even know that the Bible said that. I didn't even know what the Bible said, but he did that for me. And that's... That's what he wants to do for you right now. There's nothing special about me. But he did that for me so that I could tell you about it today. Thank you, Jesus. And that was so many years ago. Oh, but that's going to be you. That's going to be you. If you just open the door and let him in. Make him your friend. He's going to walk with you. He's going to talk with you. He's going to teach you his word. He's going to put people around you that help you and love you and pick you up and hold you accountable and discipline you. And you might not like it, but they're doing it because they love you. God wants to do all of that for you right now.
So if that's you today, just thank him. You don't even have to say it out loud. But if you feel like you need to, just shout it out. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I don't even understand what's happening in me right now, but I open my heart to you. You can have it all, Jesus. All the messed up junk that's in me. All the double-mindedness that's in me. Where I feel like I have a little bit of you and a little bit of the world. You can have it all. Thank you for correcting me, Jesus. Thank you for disciplining me. Thank you that you make me yours. I give you my life. I give you control over my life. Help me to trust you with everything. Help me to hold nothing back from you anymore, Jesus. That I would be useful to you in some way. Whether like a hot drink to warm someone or a cold drink to refresh them, Lord. That I would be useful either way, not lukewarm, that nobody wants it. That's you this morning. You have the opportunity to turn. Like Jesus said. To be diligent and turn from your indifference. Maybe you've given your life to Jesus before. Maybe you've prayed the prayer before. Maybe you've even been baptized before. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit but you've been indifferent about it ever since. You've not accepted the correction of the Lord. You've not accepted the discipline of the church and those who love you. You haven't been diligent in your walk with him. You've been indifferent towards Jesus. I want you to know that he's standing at the door and knocking just as much as he's standing at the door and knocking for the people that have never known him. And I encourage you to open that door. And even though you think in your heart that you have become an enemy of God, that is a lie from that devil that is not God's voice. If he's knocking on your heart, it's because he loves you like a child and he wants you to come back to him. Yeah. To turn back to him. To draw close to him. That you can be victorious with him. The, the reason why you weren't victorious before is that because you weren't walking with him. Yeah. You accepted his gift, but then you didn't walk with him. Yeah. That's why you weren't victorious. Uh -huh. But now, right now, you have the opportunity to turn from that indifference, be diligent, open the door, walk with him as a friend, and he will make you victorious. Amen. Jesus is the one who seats you on his throne, just like he was victorious and sat with his father on his throne. So, Father, give us ears to hear. Holy Spirit, Give us ears to hear what you're saying. Thank you, Lord. And God, I ask that you would also give us mouths to speak what you are saying, God. That you would lead us, Holy Spirit, to speak to others. That we would not be just receivers of your word, but we would be those who speak your word in faith, believing 
that it will go and accomplish everything that you sent it to go and do. Because that's what your word says. So for those of us that are not confident in speaking, Lord, I pray and ask for confidence in speaking the word of God. Not your own words and your own thoughts. The word of God. Speak it with confidence over yourself. Speak it with confidence in your home. Speak it with confidence over the people that God brings into your life who are hurting and, and weary. Help them go to Jesus. They're carrying heavy burdens. All you got to do is, let's go to Jesus with that. Yeah. Yeah. Can I show you what the Word of God says about this situation that you're dealing with? Yeah. That's our confidence. Not in your ability to be well-spoken. Cool. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Thank you Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for your presence with us today. And thank you, Father, that your presence goes with us. Lead us by your presence. Like Moses prayed, unless you go ahead of us, unless you go with us, we will not move from this place. Because it's your presence with us that sets us apart from all the people of the earth. God, we know that we are nothing without you. We are lost without your presence, without your leading, Holy Spirit. So thank you that you're here with us, and thank you that you go out of here with us to lead us and guide us by your word and through your spirit. We receive it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I want to let you go. Pastor Joe is in the back to greet you. Um, if you have any questions about anything from today, please come and talk to me. Uh, I'll hang out up front here. Pastor Joe will cover. Joe will cover in the back.